just as you are. Come and see, come receive, come and live forever. Life everlasting, unusual one to start the message with and start our worship service off with but I saw it as an invitation a time for us to empty ourselves of whatever stood in our way of worshiping God today so this is your time let's worship him he is God Almighty King of Kings and Lord of Lords says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I don't know about you this morning, but that sounds awful good. Will you come to Jesus today? This is a come to Jesus meeting. Will you come to Jesus today? Bring whatever you've got. He can handle it. He can deal with it. He can set you free. Father, in this place today, we pray that you would have your way totally and completely. Father, be pleased with what we bring as a sacrifice of praise to worship and honor You. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. It is good to have you in the house of the Lord today. And it's good to have Shelby Colson in the house of the Lord today, isn't it? Amen. Is that right, Shelby? Thank you. You're welcome. Tell them what we're going to sing. I'm going to let you work today then. We're going to ask you to stand together with us as we sing hymn number 772. When we all get to heaven, 772.
praise in the building. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship with our tithes and offerings with hymn number. William. Yeah, William's coming. Okay, thank you. Take yeah, your seat. We got, we got the other half of the Cersei family going to sing for us now. William. Just to set this up a little bit. You know, the world was made in six days. God rested on the seventh, but he's been working on heaven 2,000 years. Y'all give it a thing. And there, Brother Joe, at the, and his, when he speaks, he's going to talk about how we get there. So, one, two, three, four. Sea sides, sunsets, silver linings round the clouds. Birds fly, singing, making such a joyful sound. Thoughts of heaven somehow seem to fill my mind. But I can't even imagine what it is I'm going to find. I can't wait to get to heaven when you wipe away all my fears. In six days you created everything, but you've been working on heaven 2,000 years. Deep green forest, mountains reaching for the sky. Grasslands and deserts, your creation fills my eye. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for this beauty is just a taste of all your, all your glory. I see when I pass through those gates. I can't wait to get to heaven when you wipe away all my fears. In six days you created everything, but you've been working on heaven 2,000 years. I can't wait to get to heaven when you wipe away all my fears. In six days you created everything, but you've been working on heaven. You've been working on heaven. You've been working on heaven 2,000 years. What a place that's going to be, we sung, when we all get to heaven, and I can't wait to get to heaven, is what it said. Good job, sir, uh, Sid, uh, William, and Sydney. 730. I'm not Sydney. Let's stand again, and we'll worship with the tithes and offerings for today. 730. <laughs>
Tucker. What's that boy's name? Tucker. <laughs> Tucker, would you come and help with it? Father, we just thank you for gathering us here today, Lord, in your presence, Lord. We just we pray, Father, that you would just fill this place, first of all, with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Just just bring others to you, Lord. Any of those out there in the congregation, Lord, that do not know you, Lord, we just pray for salvation for them, first and foremost, Father. Lord, we pray for this offering that we're about to take up, Lord. We pray that you would use it as you see fit in the areas you see need, Father. Lord, we love you with all our heart and all our soul. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
child of God. Yes, I am. truly a blessed church. Do you agree? We are blessed people. You are blessed by God. Some of you not sure. Listen, I, I, I'm sitting here watching and it, it's just, it amazes me. Uh, I'm going to ask, and if it's convenient, I'm going to ask all of the babies to stand up. Make mama pick you up or daddy pick you up or whoever's got you, pick you up, and stand up. Oh my goodness, y'all look around, look around, look around. Oh, what a blessing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank y'all. <laughs> I can't think about a child of God. It doesn't get much more pure than that, does it? It doesn't, it really doesn't. What a blessing. I need your help. <laughs> Somebody's sitting there, yeah, your wife's out of town. You need my help. <laughs> yeah, Terry is, Terry's taking care of our, our grandchildren in Huntsville, Alabama uh, for, uh, I think, another eight days, six hours, 43 minutes, and 12 <laughs> seconds. Not that I'm counting. Uh, uh, I don't do... So I, I, here's my disclaimer. I don't... <laughs> uh, I disavow any, any mess up today because my mind uh, does not function well when she's out of town. But uh, uh, I appreciate your, your being here and your, and your patience. Uh, I do need your help, though. Uh, I want you to help me by completing a thought with me. Okay? And here's, I'll give you the first two words, and I want you to complete the thought. Jesus is. King of kings. King of kings. Your Savior, Lord of Lords, risen, creator, friend, your Redeemer, is alive, here, Woo. and answer to your prayers. Jesus is. Sir? Thomas? Did you? He is in your soul. He sets up home there. He is hope. Anybody else? He's your coming king. Mm. Mm -mm. Those are all great. I tell you, the Bible gives us very clear understanding of who Jesus is. and gives us knowledge of who Jesus is. I want to just give you just a few verses this morning to, to think about. Uh, uh, this is uh, found in Matthew. You, you just hang in here with me because we're going to play Bible drill a little bit today. But uh, Matthew chapter 12 uh, Jesus had healed a, 
a man who was uh, blind and unable to speak. And uh, they were amazed at what Jesus had done to the point that this was the question that they raised. Could it be that Jesus is the Son of David, the Messiah? Could it be that Jesus is the Son of David, the Messiah? All this as a result of what they saw Him do. They saw Him heal a man who was blind and dumb and could speak and could see. And it raised that thought of could it be this is who Jesus is. In 1 John chapter 4, John writes this. He said, all who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them and they live in God. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. Some of you made that declaration a moment ago when I asked you to complete the thought, Jesus is the Son of God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 5 says, All who can win this battle, and who can win this battle against the world? Now I'd stop and think about that. Think about the question that's raised there. Think about the condition of our world today. I'm, there, let me tell you, this, this question has never been more relevant than it is today. Who? Who can win this battle against the world? This is the answer that's provided in 1 John chapter 5. It says, only those, only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God will have victory over this world. Luke chapter 24. It's the account of Jesus having been risen or going to the grave. The, the, the ladies that went to the grave in this chapter 24, verse 23 says, They, they said His body was missing and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Someone declared that a moment ago. Jesus is alive. If you openly declare in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Wow. Wow. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Acts chapter 5, verse 42. <laughs> this is kind of the result of all this knowledge of who Jesus is. It, it, it resulted in this. It said that every day in the temple, and from house to house, they continued to teach and to preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. The direct result of, for those who have declared that Jesus is Lord. To preach this message, Jesus is the Messiah. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. We sang about that. Some of you sat there and you voiced it in song. And you recognized it in your heart that I am a child of the King. I am a child of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ has become a child, Jesus is the Christ, has become a child of God. And then Philippians chapter 2 that said that the day would come. The day is coming and I believe it is very soon sooner than we realize that every tongue will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now there's one other, there's a number of statements in Scripture that make declarations of who Jesus is or completing that thought of Jesus is. There's one particular, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ 
is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What was true about Jesus, who Jesus was 2,000 years ago, is true today. And it will be true forever. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is our friend. He is all of these things and so much more. Do you remember the encounter that the disciples had with Jesus found in Matthew's Gospel in the 16th chapter? He comes to them and He asks them a question. He said, who do people say the Son of Man is? <laughs> they, they, they didn't have their act together then. They said, well, some people say that you're John the Baptist. Some say that you're Elijah. Some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then he asked them. He asked them a very poignant question and a very personal question. He said, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Oh, Simon Peter, bold, brash. He was, he was ready to speak up. Simon answered him and said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus told him that had to have been revealed to him by the, through the Father from heaven. I asked you to complete the thought Jesus is a moment ago. And I know some of you responded from that personal perspective. But not everybody. You see, Jesus asked His disciples, who do you say I am? So I want to ask you once again, and I'm going to ask Ashley to put your responses up on the wall. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you personally? Who is He? Every breath I breathe. Lord and Savior. Encourager. Comforter. Light of the world. Strength. Who is Jesus to you? Can I make it even more, <laughs> more personal? Who is Jesus to you right now, right here, today, in this place? Your life. Your present help in times of trouble. <laughs> Who is Jesus to you? You see, some of you have come to terms with this. And you know without a shadow of a doubt who He is to you. But there's some of you sitting here today that when you take this question and place it on a personal, intimate level, is <laughs> it's difficult to voice. Constant companion. Peacemaker. Who is your, your hope? Right now, today, in this place, who is Jesus to you? Ooh, glory. The Most High God. Amen. Now with this understanding, what's been expressed in the room today, for now, for right now,
I just want you to tell, I want to tell you that Jesus has a few questions for you. In the context of where you are today, what you're coping with, with the context of life and all the heartaches, the good stuff, the bad stuff, the difficult times, the times where things are going smooth, all of that and in taking into consideration. I want to ask you a few questions. There was a point in time in Jesus' ministry, it was early on, and it's found in John's Gospel in the first chapter, and Jesus was, people were becoming aware of Jesus, and it was the several, a couple of disciples of John the Baptist began following Jesus as he passed by. John had pointed out who Jesus was that he, as he went by, and two disciples heard him and they, they, and they followed Jesus. They began following Jesus. And Jesus turned around and noticed them following Him. And this is the question. This is the question that Jesus asked those two men. And I believe that Jesus is asking you this question today. This is the question. He says, what are you looking for? Are you a follower of Jesus? Would you claim to be a follower of Jesus? As you follow Jesus, what are you looking for? Maybe you're looking for peace. Maybe you're looking for joy. Maybe you're looking for answers that only God can give. But what is it you're looking for as a follower of Jesus? Maybe it's direction in life. Guidance. What are you looking for as you followed Christ? If you remember, <laughs> there was a, when Jesus was a little boy, you remember the story of, of Mary and Joseph going to Jerusalem, going to uh, celebrate one of the festivals. And they went into Jerusalem and Jesus went with them. And they were traveling with a large group, evidently traveling with a large group of people. And when they left the city, headed back home, they just assumed that Jesus was with somebody else in their group. And it wasn't until... A, a, a time later where they realized, where's Jesus? Where is He? In the context of that incident that occurred, Jesus asked His mom and dad a question that I believe that Jesus is asking you today. Here's the question. Jesus asked them, why are you searching for me? Why are you searching for me? And then he said, didn't you know? Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be in my Father's house? So Jesus is asking you this morning, what are you looking for? Why are you searching for me? Some of you, you're sitting there saying, Brother Joe, you don't understand. For me, the search is over. I found Him. I'm following Him. I'm looking to Him for direction, for guidance, for peace, for all those things that you said, and even more. But there's some of you there that may be here today and you're searching for answers and you're not quite sure Maybe you've identified through a head knowledge of who Jesus is, but you've never transferred it to a heart knowledge of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A personal relationship that is totally dependent upon Him, that is surrendered where you've surrendered yourself to Him. What are you looking for? Why are you looking for me? 
Then there's, a, there's, there's an incident of, uh, found in Mark's Gospel where two of Jesus' disciples, James and John, you know, sons of thunder or sons of Zebedee, they, they approach Jesus and uh, this is what their statement to Jesus was, Teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask you. And this is Jesus' question to those two men, and I believe it's His question to you. What do you want Me to do for you? Sound familiar? You remember blind Bartimaeus? He was sitting along the side of the road and Jesus was coming through and as He came through with a a group of people and uh, He would cry out to Him, Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. <laughs> and that, that, that friendly crowd that was traveling around, uh, you know, they were quick to respond. They said, leave him alone. Be quiet. It was bothering them. He cried out even more, Jesus, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. And he called for him to come to him. And then everybody got encouraging. Quick. The master's call. Blind Bartimaeus came up and Jesus looked at him and he asked him this question. I believe he's asking this question for you today. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? It's interesting, the two contrast of those two stories where that same question was asked. The first one was, was asked out of uh, where the, 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 the James and John came to Jesus. They came uh, seeking something out of a desire, a want. Well, Bartimaeus had a desire and a want, but it went deeper than that, didn't it? He had a need in his life. He couldn't see and he had the faith to believe that Jesus could do something about it. Jesus asked in both instances, what do you want me to do for you? great preacher named Charles Spurgeon made the statement, I have a great need for Christ. I have a great Christ for my need. So I want to ask you another question. And I want you to respond to it. We're going to put them up, answers up on the screen. I want you to complete this thought. I need Jesus. Every minute. I need Jesus. He is the way. What do you need Jesus to to do? What do you want? Jesus is asking you, what do you want me to do for you? Would you be bold enough to declare it? Say, Brother Joe, you're getting real personal now. You're getting into some some things that would be hard for me to express. Need Jesus to teach you. To love through you. To give you peace. To save your grandchildren. Fight my battles to guide, to lead, to sustain, to give peace, to give hope, shower with great, provide direction, and save me. Anybody else? I need Jesus too. Thomas. To take care of my family. Anybody else? 
I need Jesus to take care of my family. Thank you, Thomas. To save your husband. To give her the right path to walk with him. To be a light in the darkness. To go to tell you where to go next. Help you to see others the way He sees them and to love them the way He loves them. Anybody got a friend or family member that you know is lost? Do you need Jesus to save them? How many of you believe in the power of prayer? I believe it. God answers prayer. And there's, there's a principle in Scripture that we find in Matthew chapter 18 that I believe is called, we could refer to it as the, a, a prayer of agreement. And out of all these things and even more than what we put on the screen this morning, I'm asking you as, this, as, our, as, as my church and as your church, as our church family, as the body of Christ here at Dry Creek, if we can come together and pray a prayer of agreement for these petitions, these needs that we have voiced to one another. In Matthew chapter 18, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, it says this, it says, I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything, concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. I believe that Jesus is here today. And I believe He will be a part of our prayer of agreement if you would pray these, this prayer. Praying, asking the Father. Making the declaration of your needs to Him. Would you do that? I'm going to ask you to do something different. If you'd be open to being a part of this prayer of agreement, I'm going to ask you to get up and come down front. Just come down front and stand down front. We're going to pray together. I'm not going to make you pray out loud. But if you would come, based on what, we've, what has been voiced this morning, and just gather here at the altar down front. Jerry, I'm going to ask you, would you lead our prayer? Come to the mic. Father, we come to you this morning, uh, Lord, as sheep. Lord, as sheep looking to the shepherd. Lord, weak, sickly. Lord, we ask that uh, these concerns, these spiritual issues, these illnesses, or these lost conditions, lost loved ones, Lord, we pray in the great name of Jesus, that you would move. Lord, that you would move in our midst, in our sight. Lord, in our awareness. God, give us discernment to see you move. Give us desire to see you move. Give us forgiveness to see you move. 
Lord, help us to to yield to you and to your spirit. Help us to yield, Lord, to you and your way. Lord, as we bow here this morning, we acknowledge you as the Most High God. Lord, you declared that all authority is given to you. And Lord, we submit to that authority. Our heads bowed, our hearts opened. Lord, we pray this morning that you would grant these requests. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You go back and have a seat if you would. Galatians chapter 3, verse 20 says this. It says, Now all glory to God. Now listen to it. Listen to it now. Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Now think about it. Think about what we just asked for. Think about the things that we just prayed for, the things that were just voiced. It says, all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning that He is able. He is able. He is able through the power, the power at work within you to accomplish infinitely and abundantly more than we think or ask. All glory to God. All glory to God. Oftentimes, Jesus asks us a question where I believe He's not necessarily looking for a verbal response. He's looking for action. I know in my own life, I've shared with you before that for years, for years, the the constant question is this, that Jesus constantly has asked me, He says, do you trust me? And for years, my response was this, yes, Lord, I trust you. But my actions (laughs) had a but by what I was doing. And I got to thinking about that and, and, you know, how can we give God glory through our actions? One of the stories in John's, the last chapter in the book of John, chapter 21, if you remember the story of Jesus' restoration of Peter. And you've heard it preached, I've preached it before, the that encounter between Jesus and Peter, Jesus asked Peter a question. How many times did he ask him the same question? Three times. Now, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this week, when I was studying and preparing for this, I, I read that passage, and I read it from a very different perspective I've never read before. I preached it before, and I preached it from the perspective, if you go back to the Greek, The word love has three different expressions in the Greek language, and two of them are interchanged as this verbal interchange between Jesus and Peter goes on. Because Jesus asked Peter, he asked the question, he said, do you love me? And you know Peter's response. Yes, Lord, I love you. And he asked him again. He said, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Then that third time he asked him, Peter, do you love me? It hit me like a ton of bricks this week. Jesus wasn't looking necessarily for a verbal response. Because what was Jesus' direction to Peter whenever he said, yes, you know I love you? He said, feed my 
Can I tell you what Jesus is saying to Peter? I believe He's saying to you and I, Jesus is saying, show me you love me. Show me you love me. There's far too many of us that are too content by simply expressing things verbally and saying, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus is saying, show me you love me. Show me by the way you live your life. Show me by your attitude and love for others. Show me through the words you express. Show me through the faithfulness of your participation in the body of Christ. Show me. So the last question I'm presenting to you coming from Jesus, and I believe from the very heart of Christ, Do you love me? Do you love me? Father, I pray, Lord God, you would help us to express not just in words, but in actions and deeds the love that we have for you. God, you've asked a a lot of questions this morning. And we've provided answers, Lord, to some of the questions, but we've kept things guarded and deep within our hearts that have not been expressed. But Lord, You know them. You know the very depths of our soul and our mind and our spirit. Lord, I pray if there's anybody here today that's struggling in their walk with You, that maybe couldn't come up with a a good answer of what they might be looking for in following you. Or being maybe unable to answer that question of what they want you to do for them. I pray, Lord, that you've used today to open the eyes of their hearts and their minds to freely express to you. To freely demonstrate to you. Not just simply by the words of our mouth, but the actions of our lives. Lord, that we truly, truly love you. God, you move. You do your work. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will stand with us, we'll sing page 79.